Okay. Um, yeah. So your audio seems fine. That's cool. Um, yeah. Let's get started because in about an hour and a half I have to do some bosses. I don't want to keep them waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even though it. I kept you waiting, of course, so... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had a ton of questions, but over the past week of just being in the chat, a lot of them have been uh, answered. Okay. So you found that being found that pretty helpful, uh, just being in there? Yeah, yeah. Like, some weird... And, I mean, I did the math on some of it. Like, oh, you know, how is IED calculated? Does it matter which... Like, let's say you have a 10% and a 30%. Does it matter which one the game calculates first? And no, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... It's, and so what's the, like um... F like, I guess the... If you add up all of them together, what would you need to hit that 96%? Like, what would be the raw value of the IED? Mm -hmm. Well, so that depends on how many sources you have, right? So, if, you, if all of your sources were, like, one... 1% sources, you would might need like 600% or something, right? But if one okay, source is 96%, so then you just need one. Okay, okay. So it does matter, like, if you have... So the order doesn't, doesn't matter, but the size yeah, of the, the lines matters, yeah. Yeah. Because it's always the percentage of whatever you're missing to get to 100%. So... Yeah, so having 40 30s yeah. is better than having a 30 and 310s. Yeah, and 160 would be even better. Yeah. Because it's always applying to a larger percentage when it applies. But whether you do a 10 first and then a 30% or the other way around, that's the same. But whether you do one 30% or three tens, that's different. Because the second and the third 10 are going over a smaller percentage that's left after, the fir after one of the other ones has applied. Okay, and then for items, or for percentages on items, do those get, like if you have two lines of 30 does that mm -hmm. is that effectively a 60 no those are two individual two sources of 30. okay okay and it'll mention it specifically so there's a few not really exceptions well familiars was like an exception in the beginning where they miscoded it and they took all of the lines from the familiars together into one <laughs> blob and then applied the one blob which was problematic because people were able to get a hundred percent of ied with all the lines together which meant that you had one source of 100%, which meant that you don't need anything else anymore because you're already at 100%. So people could roll out of all the other IED. So they had to, you know, draw, go back to the drawing board and fix that because that was not, yeah, a good, uh, not a good idea. So most of the bosses are 300%, right? But I looked over like some of the later ones, like ones that we're probably not going to get to, mm -hmm. like on GMS for a while. Um, well, people are killing uh, are like Saren right now. Those are Yeah, yeah. People are clearing Saren, and Kalos is only just out, so people are going to start trying that now. Okay, okay. So Saren and Kalos are being killed. Uh, not Kalos yet. Kalos has not been killed in any server yet. It's just too. Um, okay. Well, the amount of sacred power you need is just too hard to get to. You can imagine okay, like yeah. Kalos being in Esfera, but you only have two arcane symbols, and you only get like five symbols a day. And you need like 600 arcane power. Like that's that's like the equivalent of what you need to. Just the amount of damage reduction is just so massive that, the, yeah, people are trying to you know figure out the mechanics. But once the new symbol comes out in Odium, and once they can start doing dailies there, and that sacred power can start powering up, then they'll, because yeah, the intervals for percentage damage reduction are very harmful, very uh, non forgiving in uh, in in sacred power, even more so than arcane power. Plus the symbols level way slower, so it's just even more of a if you think arcane power is a time gate like sacred power is that squared basically yeah yeah and i'm sure you know in the coming years it'll be adjusted so that oh it's closer to arcane power but right now you know you always need yeah. that carrot to chase for the very high end <laughs> sure there might be like a guild skill that gives some sacred power and there might be a hyper stat and there might be extra dailies or maybe the sim the, the shops will have a few, just a few more you know they're slowly already increasing it, right? Like the they're decreasing the price in the event shop, for example, in um, in this in the winter event now in ignition, so people can get them a little bit cheaper. Uh, and there's more and more of those symbol selector coupons that are both arcane symbol or sacred symbol, right? So, so they're starting to help people speed up a little bit. Okay. Alrighty, then I guess you know about character progression. Um, <clears throat> so you have my items mm -hmm. now looking at like my tassel and my, I, I never know when to 
like you sh I don't think I should be striving for perfection. Mm -hmm. I should be more economic with like getting something good and then moving on to something that can give me more gains for less, you know? So my, Definitely, my yeah. tassel, my secondary is 9% damage, 6% luck, 15 ID, which isn't great. But when you look at my other items, it's so far and away the better one that I feel like what I what I haven't been doing because I don't want to is if I get a good item mm -hmm. and I don't have enough to ensure that I can make it better, I'm not gonna roll it because then I'm just gonna end up worse off than than before. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the, that's the um, correct impulse for sure. There are some pieces that you just push on uh, earlier. And the main thing is because either you hold on to them longer, which means there's there's like a bigger efficiency on the upgrade. And the other one is because the types of stat that that item can get um, probably is just more impactful than on other equips. And the combination of that makes it that you push way harder in some direction on one item than you might in another uh, direction on another item. Like one item might get uh, backups way more easily. So you just hold off and you wait on star forcing. Uh, before that and you start force it way earlier than you start for something else for example yeah so i mean i i have my tassel which i'm probably not gonna be rolling because i want to get to the point where i can do no because once i get no that's getting replaced you know yep. once i can get something good on no so there's no reason to waste anything on it now because sure i'm gonna get something better mm -hmm. um the gold emblems are essentially you know, good for a long time, correct? Like yeah. the only other better ones are like event emblems. Even those, yeah, something. maybe event, but like Saren <laughs> drops one, yeah, so. Okay. Yeah, so a while, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah, also an item well. that doesn't have, uh, especially once you get to unique and legendary, doesn't have too many junk lines. So compared to a lot of other pieces like secondaries, it is definitely one you push on a lot earlier. And yeah, an equip yeah, can definitely look notice... like, yeah. Can look equivalent. I did notice yeah. I'd roll it and I'd be getting like really good. I'd be like, okay, when I roll other stuff, it's a crapshoot. But with this one, it's like it has less to go through. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's where the calculators are very helpful because the calculators just have all the variations in them. Um, I don't know if you've used those, right, through cubing. And you can just see how much it's going to cost me on average to get a certain type of... Um, uh, a certain type of potential, you know, like how much it's going to cost on average. And if you plug yeah, in the yeah, same potential for different items, I think like on the secondary, the average cost could be like double than what it is on an emblem, for example. So if you're trying to organize in your brain, like, okay, where do I push first? Just playing around with a calculator a little bit can already give you some insight on like where, because you're talking about not chasing perfection, right? Which is definitely a very good impulse because because um, no, no equip is ever done if you think about it. So in that sense, it's always about a balance. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, you know, on this, my next big project. So I'm deciding between rings because I have two event rings and the emblem. The mm -hmm. emblem's not great, but it's 30 ID, 6 luck. Mm -hmm. um, but I do want to get that to a better, like, damage because, you know, luck on an emblem and stuff like that apparently isn't good because you can get much better things. So yeah, you can get attack you're percent. Be getting yeah. Yeah, you're you're gonna be getting a lot more from other items, anyways. Well, yeah, and it's multi. So, it's like multi-purpose. So if you're mobbing right now, you're basically getting nothing out of the emblem stat. Like you're getting the same thing that you could get out of a rare or maybe an epic any other armor. And when you're bossing, you're getting a little bit more, but only if you really need the IED. But versus if you're getting attack percent or what most people want in the pretty early stages of the game, a combination of attack and IED, then it'll both be more effective when you're mobbing and it'll be way more effective when you're bossing at the same time. Okay, yeah. And and, and for a reasonable cost. You know, that's like an important caveat, of course, to add into that, uh, into that little thing. Um, so usually yeah. with the equips and everything, usually I kind of like finished out with the equips. But I mean, if you have some specific equip questions, uh, we can start with that. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Um, you know, what do you start with? Like a count? I, I, if you have like a, if you have a list of stuff you just want to get through, um, then we could just go by the list. Usually, I like to finish with equips though, because I feel like if all of the, a lot of it comes down to just like understanding where damage comes from and how hard you need to, how hard pushing in certain directions makes sense, right? And then once those things make sense, I feel like the getting through the equip part and the future for the equip part is a lot easier because it'll rely on some of the stuff that we 
will have already gone through, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, I mean, we can start wherever you usually do. I had I had questions, but again, a week in the chat, and then, mm -hmm. you know... Uh, yeah, if anything is left week, there, I like ID, you, we, can, we can start there, I guess. Yeah. So we can iron so those out, you... make sure they're <laughs> completely clear. Yeah, so, um... What's the difference between damage percent and final damage? Final damage is, or sorry, I know the difference, but is final damage better than um, just damage percent? Yeah, so this is a matter of scaling. Um, so basically just damage is additive and, and final damage is multiplicative, which is yeah. which doesn't always mean that one is better than the other, but in this sense it does. So. If you add a source of 5% final damage, it just looks at whatever damage you're already doing, anything that you're already putting out, and then it's multiplying that by 1.05. If it's if it's like a new source. If it's an existing source of like five uh, final damage that goes to 10, then it replaces its, it, its own five with a 10. So it's not the same as a new source. It's kind of like IED in that way, right? Yeah. Um, but the kind of the opposite, because if you um, if you increase an existing source, it's less efficient. But for IED, if you increase an existing source, it's more efficient, right? Because it becomes a bigger okay. clump of whatever is left. But IED doesn't go to uh, sorry, final damage doesn't go towards a certain max like um, like uh, IED does. IED goes towards 100 and then it's done. But final damage is like sky's the limit, so it goes um, yeah, it's just multiplicative with each other. So if you have like a, one source of 10% final damage, you would go from, you know, your damage being, let's say one, it goes to 1.1 times your damage, right? And then if you had another source of 10% final damage, it's a different source, it would multiply the 1.1 1 .1, uh, by 1.1. 1 .1. So you end up with 1.21 and not at 1.2, right? So you end up with an extra okay, percent okay. Of, of final damage. So if you can get a lot of individual sources of final damage, that would be cool. Um, but there's a lot of clumps of what signifies final damage. So when people say final damage, they usually mean a stat that physically is written out and says final damage and what goes into your stat window and shows up as a final damage. But if you see in your in your window, in your stat window that you have 400% final damage, just like you know with IED, if you see 90%, that doesn't mean you have nine sources of 10%, right? And if you see 400% final damage, it also doesn't mean that you have like 10 sources of 40% because they multiply with each other. So what you probably have is like a few sources of 20% and maybe one of 50%, but then they internally multiply to like a way bigger number. Okay. Um, um, and then what are the yeah. sources of final damage? Is that like uh, equipment bonuses? So final, so when sometimes people talk about final damage in the more mathematical sense, so um, you have a bunch of clumps of damage that are working together and each one of those sources is basically a clump of final damage. So IED is a clump of final damage in a way because when you don't meet the ID, right, with the, like the 300% PDR, whatever defense is left of the boss, whatever PDR is left, that is a percentage final damage reduction on your total damage. So the clump of like all of the ID that you have becomes a final damage reductor in your stat. In the same way, your damage bonus and your boss damage, if you're attacking boss monsters, or your damage bonus and your damage to normal monsters together, also becomes one clump multiplier of final damage. But again, because that's additive, at a certain point you end up with like 400%. So adding, if you add like 10% to a clump of 400%, it's not like adding 10% final damage, but it's like 140th, so it's only like 2.5% final damage. So sometimes people will mention the term final damage in that way. Um, or they'll say like, oh, I have 60k stat, I added something, and now I have 61k stat. That is 1 60th of what you had, so that's like, um, what is that, 1.6% final damage, quote unquote. Which is which is true it is like a final damage but it is more like you know it's more like total damage basically you know if you want if you want to use that it's not specifically what's mentioned final damage if you're asking me specifically what are sources of, of stuff that is labeled as final damage all of that is within the kit of the character and in the reboot passive that's where like all okay, of the final yeah. damage comes from there are some ways yep. of augmenting it very very limited sometimes you will have final damage uh, applying in like fourth job skills for example and then with combat orders or decent combat orders by leveling up the skill past their max you could add some final damage but that is 
pro that is like the only way. There's no hyper stat, there's no legion grid, like there's no link skills that give like final damage. If there were, they would be on the top of every single list because it's multiplicative, <laughs> because it ap amplifies everything, right? And it would be everywhere and everyone would always be like, oh, these are like the brain dead ones that you have to go. So what we look at is what is the closest to emulating what, is, what final damage does. And what's really close to that is making sure that you have enough IED so you minimize your final damage reduction. Um, getting damage and boss damage, of course, you know, because that clump together is a source of kind of final damage. And the, the really big one is critical damage. If you don't have too much critical damage yet, making sure that you get critical rate to enable a critical hit and getting as much critical damage as possible, you know, without scaling into like the 300% because there is diminishing returns there as well, as it is additive, just like boss damage is with, itse with itself. Um, those are the stats that most closely emulate what final damage is. So that, those are the ones that we chase. Okay. Yeah, I just hit uh, in the in the stats it'll show ninety one percent, but I just hit a hundred because I got a phantom and my second um, archer to mm -hmm. uh, one twenty, or I I got my first archer to one forty, which mm -hmm. is a marksman, which gives what like plus three at one forty. Um, oh, I did want to ask. Yeah, it's ten if you have all three. Yeah. Wow, I actually forgot. I I genuinely have a, a ton of questions. Yeah, um, yeah, we can go through them one at a time. As I long as you feel always... like you have a good enough answer, you can just jump to the next one. Yeah. Um. Oh, inner ability plus one on passive skills. So does that just add like one skill level, or does it add a one to the passive skill? So when I just talked about with the with the combat orders and the decent combat orders, that basically will happen um, with that passive. Okay. But it will stack with decent combat orders, so it's, it's like you have real combat orders on. So some classes, specifically the newer classes that will have a lot of passive buffs or buffs to all of their existing skills or things like final damage, critical damage, IED, boss damage, all of those, those classes will benefit very strongly from getting plus one passives more so than any of the other stuff because it's just baseline 100 percent uptime solid foundational stats that will yeah people have just done those calculations so that's where that where that comes from it's typically yeah. though it, it might very typically be something you switch into later if you have something like a plus one passive or in some cases plus one attack speed or like you know buff duration stuff like that that ends up being your best in slot or maybe even boss damage that usually does mean though that it's something that you don't have to chase too early but it's more like a thing that like min maxing is just slightly better when you're optimizing for your damage and what you want to consider a lot of times if that's not absolutely necessary might be something like critical rate early on just so you can get to 100 percent faster while you're still building out your legion and your links for example or so you can take a little bit of pressure off of your hyper stats maybe or something like mesoptane and drop rate which is highly advisable so that you can either get more you know more nodes with the drop rate uh and more maybe more backups more event items but mostly the mesoptane is highly sought after because the amount of sources of mesoptane is very low and because of, you know, the reboot, uh, how much money we get, 20% is very big. And that helps you get through the game a lot faster. So if you don't have something in your inner ability that's absolutely vital that you need to rely on, like those stats I mentioned, then 20% mezzo is, is usually advised for, like, the mid-game and even through most of the late game. Okay. And on the topic of mezzo obtained, um, mm -hmm. does that change the value of boss crystals? No, no. Boss crystals okay. were, like... Literally brought into play to make sure that it would not interfere with mesoptane stuff at all to give people a base number of income Depending on how many people you know are doing the boss fight and depending on the difficulty of the boss uh, In the past they would drop bags. Yeah, and then a little bit of mesoptane on all of them would augment your income But they specifically brought in crystals to you know to, to not make that even bigger, you know between the haves and the have-nots and then for um, Item drop rate does that affect boss item drops? Yes, so to an extent, there are groups of equips that are not affected, and there are groups of equips that are affected. And I'm going to be real, nobody knows 100% what is part of which group. Um, there are some things that, you know, over years of running bosses, we kind of come to deduce, and then sometimes they come out with statements that are like, oh, these things are actually affected, and then people are like, okay, I guess so, even though that seems weird. And then later it turns out that it wasn't, or that it was, but only by certain sources of drop rate, you know? So... Um, 
a lot of times it's just like better safe than sorry approach and people just try to switch and always have as much drop rate as possible so that even if it is you know if it is affected then you're good and if it isn't then at least you were you were safe you know yeah yeah it doesn't hurt you know. Yeah, exactly. Well, it, it can. Than Sometimes than you, like, die out because you're trying you to switch gears at the end of a boss fight, and then you die out or something, and you have to try again later, and you have the stupid half-hour cooldown so that it makes absolutely sure that all your buffs are stripped and you have to wait longer. But what they are doing, though, in the August 31st update is they're adding, at least to the more difficult bosses, they're adding, like, treasure rooms at the end to a lot of them. Similar to, like, you know, Chaos, Chaos Queen and, um... What was that? Was there a chipmunk in the chat? Hello? Your your voice just... I think you... Can you leave the call and rejoin? You, you sound like Alvin and the chipmunks going on right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm professional. Are you back? Hello? 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 Yeah, okay, yeah, you're good now. <laughs> Holy shit, that was so okay. fucking weird. Okay. It sounded like fucking Chipmunk just joined into the call and <laughs> tried to hijack your progression session. Okay. Sorry, yeah, that's what I was saying. The um, the treasure boxes at the end of bosses, so you can just, you know, and they give them a lot more HP so they don't accidentally trigger. So you can switch into your drop rate gear and, uh, you know, everyone can switch into a drop rate gear, see who has the most drop rate and hit them. Because there is the matter of instance drops and share drops. So instance drops are just for, are rolled specifically but at the moment that the boss dies or the box dies for every individual player in the team. Uh, or in the party, I should say. And then share drops are rolled, just are general drops that anyone can loot. And yeah. the, the th going theory now, which I think is correct, is that the share drops... Um, drop rate is determined by the person who does the most damage either to the boss or to the box and then their drop rate determines the drop for that and for the instance it's the drop rate of the individual person at the moment so that's why everyone is just always switching anyway basically okay yeah yeah I saw you doing that when you were doing lucid lucid will and, uh, yeah exactly lotus damien I try to do that as much as possible yeah yeah, you you take a death so that you can swap while you're dead. And then yeah, because there's always so much shit hitting you, right? It's like every game. Yeah, it's all like bullet hell, basically. So if you're yeah, dead and then the respawn. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. constant tick damage too. It, yeah, and exactly. Just... And then you have um with the resp with the resistance link skill, you have eight seconds of immunity when you respawn. So you use those eight seconds to switch as many pieces as possible. Sometimes you take two or three deaths, you know, depending on the boss. And then, um, that's what you have the buff freezers for, right? To make sure that your drop rate is applied, basically. A lot of times, yeah. when you get better with the, at the boss, the buff freezers aren't there for dying during the boss fight. It's just to make sure that you can switch gear and keep all your buffs up when you're doing another boss after it. <laughs> uh, um, okay, for the boss yeah. crystals, yeah, it's 180 a week, correct? Is that account-wide? Uh, 180, yes, per for your it's not a, well like worldwide, yeah. So you could play different uh, within your account. You could play different worlds, right? Like I could okay. play on Bera and I could play on. Uh, so those would be separate, or I could play on EU and NA. Those would be technically seen as different accounts, but you log in through the same credentials. But um, yeah, that's that's just within all your characters within any any server, yeah. Okay, because I like hadn't I knew there was a limit, and mm -hmm. I was like, huh, I haven't hit it yet. But I only have two characters that are like actively bossing. Yeah, whenever girl. you talk to the NPC, it'll show on the top left how many you can still sell that week. Wow, I have not noticed that. Yeah, it's a little speech bubble. If you just if you don't look at it, you don't notice. But if you click on him, oh, I will buy 141 more this week. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so that means you sold 39 so far. Yeah. Yeah, if you're just starting out, there's no fucking way you can get to that. Like, you would have to do every <laughs> single boss every single day on two characters, and I don't think you can even hit that number. And you'd be selling some obscure, like, 300k sim <laughs> rocks at that point. <laughs> and at that point, you know, um, that is something I do want to caution for, and, like, some of that will seem automatic, but some of it you might overlook after a while, is that if you try to... Because you did mention efficiency, and sometimes people try to min-max so much that they stop min-maxing. So, like, sometimes people will see, like, the, the, the system of the boss crystals, for example, as something that you can min-max in, as in selling 180 crystals a week. But if you would start chasing that now with, like, two or three characters, you'd be playing wildly inefficiently, right? You'd have yeah. to start, like, finding bosses and doing, like, research on what even drops crystals, when you should just be spending that time to just grind on your character and get more levels. That's way more efficient of your time. So, always try to 
take a step back every now and then and like make sure you don't min max in like a micro system because that might mean that you're not min maxing anymore in the in the macro system not that, yeah, you know, yeah. No, that should I be your goal, but, like, try to keep a balance on everything, basically, yeah. Yeah, I enjoy min-maxing, but I, it gets to a point... I mean, this is this is a numbers game. Your yeah. numbers go up game for me. Mm -hmm. It's not like some, you know... I, I raid in Final Fantasy, that's where I do my hardcore stuff. This is oh, I see, just okay. like, oh, look, pretty number. Like, uh, <laughs> it goes up, hey, this is fun, <laughs> you know? Yeah, we don't have so, those, uh, those fancy triangles and circles on the ground here, so you're just gonna have to <laughs> learn your positioning. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, but, so um, are you around like level, what are you like level 215, something like that? Um, I'm 212 on 212. my Ho Young, 213 on my Ice Lightning. Okay, so my yeah. goals right now are when I feel like it, I'll pop a totem, pop some cards, and do two hours on my Ice Lightning. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I hit 220, I'll get two fake Abzos, and one will go on my Ho Young, and one will go on my Ice Lightning. Okay. Oh yeah, so the Ice Lightning is the explorer that can trigger those two? Yeah. Okay. Yep, I've only been playing this account for three weeks now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you so know, I'm bad. working on, on the links and legions and things of that sort. Yep. Uh, I, I've been doing a lot of that this week. I've actually skipped quite a few dailies. Oh, um, is Monster Park also server-wide or is it character-specific? Um, so that the two entries a day that used to be server, yeah, no, that is server wide, yeah, yeah. So, okay, yeah, it counts, it counts like how many clears you've done for the achievement and for the quest that's per character, but it counts for your account to see how many runs you can do in total. So, if you want to okay. get like the 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 bot, the um, you know, the seven day monster parker, right? Um, you can't just do 77 on one character and then unlock that for all your characters you have to do that on every individual character <laughs> but you can only do seven total runs in your account per day yeah so two free ones okay. and you can buy five extra with um, either reward points or with mesos unlimited oh you can buy it with mesos yeah i every yeah every now and then i see people in chat being like wait you could buy with mesos i yeah i i just assume that 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 everybody knows that but i just yeah feel <laughs> Thought I should mention now, it. It's like it... three and a half, no, two and a half. Yeah, I think two and a half mil per extra coupon. But I think it is worth it. Once you have like a good basic income, it's good to always max out. Okay. Yeah. I mean, especially with, um, I mean, some of the boxes. Oh, three point five. Yeah. Good, good things. Yeah, but it, it's just mainly things. the coins. You want to get, you want to be able to use those, um, those monster park potions uh like all the time on all of your mules and just always have them covered green pot red pot or blue pot and gold pot just to speed all, all up a little bit and okay every bo every box you open has 15 to 30 coins so that's like enough for th you know anywhere between two and six or up to 12 like potions or, or no, up to six potions so you can very quickly start mass producing those okay okay Good to know. I mean, I'll probably, what I've been doing right now is, um, you know, I bought out all my totems for the month, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like the last day of the month and I haven't been slamming them, which there's no rush to, I have literally the whole month, but, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I've been using a totem on mules from like 70 to 120. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, yeah, just slam them, yeah. with, with some coupons, you know, Legion coupons. Yeah, definitely. The thing is, I haven't been upgrading my Legion because um, uh, some of my Legion pieces are like level seventy. So when I get them to one forty or one twenty, I won't, you know, I won't need the slots till then. And it's kind of like a, you know, what mm -hmm. I'll do it. I'll do it when I get there. I'll, I'll upgrade it when I need the slot. But at this point, like it's not super filled out. I have like yeah, two no. or three seventies. No, that's totally fine. Once you get to two K, you get like. A a little bit of space, right? Then the grid starts getting bigger, starting at 2k. I would say it's okay. Yeah, you know, it's really at yeah, 3k that unlock. you get. Yeah. So at 2k, 3k, 4k, 5k, 6k, those are the intervals where you get one, like one extra dimension on the, yeah, on the on the grid. Like it, yeah. Every single corner goes out one, basically. Yeah, it only goes out one. Yeah, yeah. I I noticed that. I was looking over the Legion system, and I was like, oh, I thought it just unlocked everything but nope I no so, so she goes. but every yeah but every single time it goes out one it goes out one extra right because of because it's diagonal so you get like extra so you get six extra then seven then eight then nine then ten 
And so you yeah. eventually end up with 40 extra grid. Yeah, yeah, leveling up that early, yeah, it's just a lot of coins, of course. Um, once you get to 3k, then it's definitely worth doing the upgrading and, um, and like, redoing where the pieces are. Because that's the jump from 2.5 to 3. You also get to put five extra characters on the board instead of just one. Oh, so okay. that's when you can really move into like the outside field right you can move in more into the crit rate so that every new character that you make gets a lot of crit rate from that you can move into the crit damage on the opposite side and you'll be using the middle basically just to connect the left and the right side oh okay to get their base <clears throat> damage and up. then where does so back to ied where does mm -hmm. most of somebody's ied come from so i i went over the link skills mm -hmm. and the you know i think Luminous gives 20 at max, and then you have like 10 from Ho Young and 10 from Zero. And mm -hmm. you know, when, when you're in the 80s, that 10% really isn't a lot. I mean, it, it's useful, but I did notice that. Um, yeah, if you're trying to chase 90s uh, and you're doing 10% at a time of whatever you're missing, then it takes a whole lot of 10%. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's still not bad, but from what no, I sure. understand, some of the some of the links mm -hmm. are since you only have twelve slots, you're playing slot management, so you're trying to put the ones that are the best in there, not the, you know, at a certain point that ten percent IED I feel like is going to be less useful than, yeah. you know, something else you need. It, it that's very possible, but if you're low on IED, then any IED you do is uh is very important, right? So we can give a a final damage example or like a you know how much final damage less whatever so if you're at 80 percent right and you're attacking a boss that needs 300 which you probably aren't doing yet you're probably mostly hitting boss that need 200 and less right so let's say 200 for now um so 80 percent of the 200 is ignored which means that you're left with 40 percent right so you get 40 percent damage reduction so your damage output is 60 percent of whatever you would be putting out if there was no reduction um yeah if you add a 10 percent line you have 10 percent of the 20% that you're missing, so 2%, you go from eight to eight, from 80 to 82, which means that if you're attacking something with 200%, then the, the damage reduction goes down from 40% down to 36% damage reduction, right? So your damage output goes from 40% um, to, uh, for 60%, sorry, to 64%. But 4% on the 60% that you would be doing is one is one fifteenth, so that's about that's almost seven percent final damage gain for a ten percent IED yeah. line. And if you had to think like, what else can I move around now that will give me seven percent of my final damage extra on bosses? You can count the, the amount of things there on no fingers because there's probably nothing else <laughs> that can give you that much. So even though it doesn't look like the number is doing a whole lot, even on a two hundred percent damage boss, it is making a significant damage. Uh, output and this is the whole move that i've been trying to do for the last three years is trying to get people to just not look at their damage range at all because it can be very um damaging to just be like oh but this other skill you know makes my damage range go up by twenty thousand. it's like okay but twenty thousand out of a million right so that's 0 0.2 percent versus the other thing it makes your damage range to the same or maybe go down but it gives you seven percent of your final damage so yeah yeah that's i mean and, and that's I've, all hidden under, so it's hard to <laughs> intuitively get that into people's heads it's very hard i've understood for a while that range means nothing mm -hmm. i think uh ho young has exactly zero buffs that buff their range um, and Maple so Warrior, my... I guess, but that's about it uh right it gives you the it... warrior gives you luck so that should make your range go up. it doesn't um increase it doesn't make it red though you know how like yeah yeah for sure yeah whereas like my hero has like more range than it but it has 3k less stats. Mm -hmm. or maybe the but, um, yeah the i think your god is blessing might give you range because i think it gives you like damage percent yeah yeah, yeah the yeah. four percent but that's not you know 100 percent uptime yeah like echo uh, yeah echo gives you attack yeah but it's very limited yeah exactly <laughs> And and that was a major thing I noticed with the new classes is they often have less inflated ranges mm -hmm. with more inflated as you're saying you know final damage because they they passively get more ID they passively get more yeah. crit rate you know or yeah, crit you, damage is yeah, a exactly. big one I've been seeing with the new classes mm -hmm. and you want those fundamental stats 
Because, yeah, even though it doesn't make your range look all flashy, nobody gives a shit. Like, if your damage <laughs> output is there, or if they do, like, a ton of lines, you can have half the range, but if you do triple the lines, you're going to do more damage, you know? Like, it's that's just <laughs> simple, yeah, it's just simple math. Uh, so, to get the ID you know and the... Where... Well, you asked about ID and the sources, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, I see on your stream you have mm -hmm. um, the... Yeah, so this is under exclamation mark IED, so I have the explanation, the calculation, where you can throw in the things yourself, and then I have the sources. So if you look at your, any character as well, if you ask for like any high-level person, you can hover over IED now, and it'll show all of the individual sources. So you might have to piece together a little bit, like which one is which exactly, but you will see that I have a few really big sources. So I have 30% from skills, I have 40% from the Legion assigned member, from the big block in Legion, that's a huge one. I have 36. Wow, that is huge. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, because it's 1% each, but it goes up to 40, right? And it doesn't seem that big in the beginning. It's just 6, but it's 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10, and then it ends up with a 40. So if you have your Legion, um, and that's, you know, one of the many things why Legion is so important, like if you have those blocks maxed out on the side, like the critical damage block is 20% critical damage, the IED maxed out is 40% IED, and then the boss damage blocked out is 40% boss damage. So I still have enough, you know, because of how big my legion is for an extra 20% critical rate and also max out the stat at 75 and a little bit of attack. So all of this together, plus all of these member bonuses, right? Plus all of the link skills and then plus the income of legion coins. Yeah, the, the amount of value you get out of building out your legion is just, uh, it's just invaluable. <laughs> it's uh, You have 84,000 legion coins. <laughs> Could you even spend that money? That many? Yeah, I think about four months ago, when I was really, my my training was really spotty. Uh, I was up to 130,000. And people were then like, oh, you'll never be able to spend that. But in about four months of actually using up my totems and training a little bit more regularly, I spent like over a third of them. <laughs> so they, it seems like a completely untouchable uh, bank. But you could, if you actually play this game and you play it actively, you definitely, even with this block of Legion, I can cut into it very, very quickly. If okay. I, yeah. I'm actually yeah. mad at Legion right now because I bought two EXP coupons mm -hmm. and then I learned they're untradeable. Yeah. Uh, well, every character like has the their own. The coins are account wide, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Cl yeah. That's correct. But every character has the, their own <laughs> limit, so you could buy on every single character individually. Oh. There's okay. only a few items that are so. Whenever you're buying items, and this goes for the shop, and this goes for every, any shop. So usually for event shops as well, it's very important when you click on a character uh, on a on an item or you hover over an item. Sometimes you'll have like an expiration date. You know, sometimes you'll have to check into the patch notes what the expiration date is. But usually it says on it. So for Legion Might, it says can be used ten days after purchase. So it means that you have ten days um, to use them uh, to to the moment that you buy them. And it says remaining ten, which means you can buy ten more. And then it says next availability is when it's going to reset. But where it says remaining yeah. 10, that means per character. Otherwise, you have things like the uh, Epic Potential Scrolls is also remaining 2, right? But when you look at the Flames, for example... it um, Remaining within this world. Exactly. So these ones are just remaining 3. I can buy these on any character. But then it says remaining within world. That means within your server. So like all of them will share. And that's important to see on event shops and on Legion shops and stuff like that. And that'll... Um, and also, it'll men it should mention now with all the new stuff at least whether it is transferable or not. So the, you see the flame; it says account bound, transferable within world. That does mean I can yeah. put it in storage. The cube is well, cube as well, but the epic potential scroll, for example, says untradeable. So that's just stuck on my character. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you told me that because I was like trying to navigate. Man, how am I going to get all these trait boost potions? There's only like one in the shop. No, it's, it's like two per character. Mm -hmm. Which, um, you know, I guess that's another thing. Yeah, trait boost, know, well, just a... as a, like a side thing, but like trait boost potions are typically something for much later in the game. It's not, not as important early on. It's usually a little bit of a little bit of a steal early on. For the coins i have about 6k saved up across three characters but each only have about 2k what mm -hmm. uh, i'm sure you have a command for like what's sort of the best for my progression to start um picking up i don't think i have that one actually i mean i have many but not for everything <laughs> <laughs> um, whatever character Wait, you... you don't have a <laughs> yeah. command for everything? No, not for every single thing, no, no. <laughs> Sorry to shatter the illusion there. Um, 
I mean, the the, the most important thing I, I would tell most people is just the, like the regular node stones. Like these are. Um, like if you don't know what to buy, you need to buy the node stones essentially. Um, income for oh, node okay. stones is low, and node stones uh, is. Um, oh, actually, that's a source of final damage. <laughs> I guess we forgot that one. Uh, but boosting your skills in the V matrix, your boost nodes, adds final damage to those skills that you're boosting. So that's yeah. and, and that's the way to get ahead. Um, yeah. So some of the sources mm -hmm. in skills. Oh, so I have right. where is this enlightenment. Um, you know, talisman, evil seeking gourd damage plus five fifty percent. Mm -hmm. That's as in like, you know, if I scroll over, what did I just say? Let's go to clone then. So I'm looking at that. It's plus plus one hundred ten, mm -hmm. and then clone base does. Why can't I find this? Hello? What job do I get clone? Oh, here we go. Uh, sixty percent. So that Service? just makes it one hundred seventy, correct? But boost nodes multiply it correct so at 80 percent, i'm almost doing twice the amount of damage with, with the skill yeah yeah it's multiplicative uh percentage yeah. it goes up to if you max a skill you can go up to 60 levels and then mostly it's two percent uh for almost all the skills two percent per level so up to 120 percent final damage bonus so you do 2.2 times the damage that you would regularly do without boost notes oh i thought how do you get it to 60? I thought the cap was 35 and then five for the slot enhancement. So every node can go up to, uh, yeah, every node can go up to, uh, so, it's, so it's special nodes stay at one, and then the skill nodes and the boost nodes can go up to 25, and then if they're in the level five slot, that will make them 30. So for a regular skill node, 30 is the highest that you can go because you can oh, only okay. equip every single node, you can only equip them once. But there's a caveat there because a node uh, for boost nodes, you can equip a skill multiple times, but just have them be the second or the third line of another node. That would make them a different node, right? So you can't equip two nodes that start with um, with clone, for example, like you mentioned, but you can have clone boost be second or third on a second or on a third node, or even on like 12 nodes if you really wanted to mathematically, right? And that <laughs> way, if you equipped all of those nodes into leveled up slots, and even with lower level nodes, you can get a lot of free levels for those skills that way. And that way you so can that's max what it, them. But boost nodes can... So a skill can be boosted up to level 60 a, a through boost nodes. So ideally, the full setup is that you have every single skill that you want at least twice in different nodes. So when you're talking about a tri-node, they always come in pairs, basically. And for some classes, it's more specific that you want two matching pairs of the same three skills just in different order because you can't equip with the same starting skill, right? And then if you have a lot of boost nodes and you basically always use them when mobbing and bossing, you basically get like a full mix and match of all of the skills that you want to boost. Or in Hoyoung's case, what is it, like eight boost nodes or something like that? Um, <laughs> so I think it's nine. Might be nine, yeah. So in, in, in Hoyoung's case, somebody even made like a little... Um, uh, a little tool that you can use to keep track of like which skills you already have and which ones you still need because it's just uh oh, where's the h uh, h i j k um because it's just uh too much too much stuff um you could just make a copy and then you can double check it to just to see that you have everything that you need uh, in the beginning and make sure that you're not getting rid of anything that you might want to level later you don't have to start leveling it immediately but at least that way that you you know that it's not um you know that you're you're 